People magazine article that came out, um, and it reminds me of the MO video uh, we made two weeks ago discussing the seven sirens up in Pennsylvania connection to Mad Greek and the vegan food, and this just this just shows me nailed it. Idaho suspect Brian Koberger visited a restaurant where two victims worked at least twice before killings. According to a former employee at the Mad Greek restaurant in Moscow, Idaho, Brian Koberger came in at least twice to grab a vegan pizza. In the weeks before the slayings of four University of Idaho students last November, the man now accused of killing them allegedly ate at the restaurant where two of the victims worked. According to a former employee at the Mad Greek restaurant in Moscow, Idaho, Brian Koberger came in at least twice to grab vegan pizza. Two of the victims, Madison Mogan and Zana Carnotal, were servers at the restaurant. It's unclear if either woman ever waited on Koberger or if they even interacted, but People confirms that a now-deleted account that appeared to belong to Koberger once followed both Mogan and Carnotal on Instagram, along with the third female murder victim, Kaylee Gonzalez. People also confirmed via an investigator familiar with the case that law enforcement is aware of the restaurant visits and the investigators have interviewed employees and owners of the Mad Greek. They have also collected surveillance video from the restaurant and surrounding businesses. The, floor, the former employee tells People that there was nothing suspicious about Koberger's visit to the Mad Greek and that he only stood out because he had a particular order. A strict vegan Koberger would check to make sure that his food had not come in contact with animal products. Mogan, Carnotal, Gonsalves, and Chapin were all stabbed to death in an off-campus rental home in Moscow on November 13th. A masked intruder entered the home and killed the four students with a fixed blade knife. More than a month later, authorities arrested Koberger, 28-year-old graduate student and teaching assistant at Washington State University. He was charged with four counts of murder and one count of felony burglary. Koberger was arrested at his parents' Pennsylvania home on December 30th. He waived his extradition to Idaho, meaning he voluntarily agreed to return to the state to face charges against him. He was transported back to Idaho on January 4th. According to the probable cause affidavit obtained by People, one of the victim's surviving roommates said she saw the killer. The roommate described a figure clad in black and a mask who walked past her as the person left the scene. The affidavit also alleged that Koberger was linked to the crime scene for DNA and cell phone pinks. Authorities have not publicly disclosed a suspected motive in the killings, Koberger has not yet entered a plea. His next, isn't, his next hearing isn't until June 26th. His attorney has not returned people's messages for comment. Yeah, I thought I would share. Um, I'll learn this here. For the November slayings of four University of Idaho students, the man, now accused of killing them, sent a series of messages to one of the victims on Instagram. This, according to an investigator familiar with the case, who tells people that in late October, Brian Koberger, quote, slid into one of the girl's DMs several times, but she didn't respond. The source adds that the message was basically him saying, hey, how are you? But he allegedly did it again and again. It's unclear why there was no response to his messages, but authorities say that the victim may have missed them completely. The investigation source explains that they're still trying to determine how aware the victims were of Koberger's existence and adds that there's no indication that he was getting frustrated with her lack of response, although he was, quote, definitely persistent. The four victims were all stabbed to death in an off-campus rental home in Moscow, Idaho, on November 13th. A masked intruder entered the home and killed the students with a fixed blade knife. More than a month later, authorities arrested of the 28-year-old Washington State University graduate student at his parents' home in Pennsylvania. He was charged with four counts of murder and one count of felony burglary. He waived his extradition to Idaho, voluntarily agreeing to return to the state to face the charges against him. According to the probable cause affidavit obtained by People, one of the victim's surviving roommates said she saw the killer and described them as a, quote, figure clad in black clothing and a mask who walked past her as they left the crime scene. The affidavit also alleged that Koberger was linked to the crime scene by DNA and cell phone pings.